Fish don't fry in the kitchen. Beans don't burn on the grill. Take a whole lot of terrain just to get up that hill. Now we're up in the big leagues, getting our turn at bet. As long as we live, it's you and me, baby. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Get her done. Intergalactic boombox, moving on up to the east side. Gotta get a piece of that pie. Question of the week, what is your favorite tech trend? Gotta start off with a couple of sat cats. Yeah. Some folks who actually donate Satoshis, the smallest bit of Bitcoin, through a podcasting 2.0 app. Chad Farrow sent 3,333 sats using Podfriend. And he says, my favorite tech trend has to be video streaming services. I ditched cable eight years ago and don't miss it one bit. It takes some time to get used to, but if you're already using Netflix or Hulu, you're halfway there already. And Kyron from the Mere Mortals podcast sent 505 sats, also in the Podfriend app, and says favorite tech trend is seeing smartphones infiltrate into the wider world. Being the dumb tourist staring at the map on his phone in a street corner in Mexico, Colombia, or Argentina is nowhere near as dangerous when everyone else is doing it as well, in comparison to five to ten years ago. Musical Mike, Hero of Light, Sora Nerd, and Kyle Tidd all say VR. That's their favorite tech trend. VR just has so much potential, says Kyle Tidd. The movement in Fract, the haptic feedback in Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners. King Jellyel, Momoko, Tu Haromaki, and Sean Phoenix say gaming consoles. Project Katana says SH2 processors in the Sega Saturn. Oh, come on now, Katana. That's not a current trend. Mike D says 4K. I love movies and gaming in it. Tyler also says 4K. Now movies don't look like smudgy garbage on HDTVs. And Clever Name says, Toys to Life. Rest in peace, Skylanders. New question of the week, best guy in a suit creature flick. I'm going to say Alien or Creature from the Black Lagoon. Those are kind of tied in my heart. The Gill Man suit from Creature from the Black Lagoon in the 1950s. It's so detailed and it still holds up. Props to Millicent Patrick who designed that iconic monster. And of course, Alien. You can't imagine a xenomorph without the late great H.R. Giger, discovered by Ridley Scott as a conceptual art piece, and said, that's my alien. And he fell in love with the biomechanical style, and as far as bringing it to life on set, Carlo Rambaldi, legendary creature maker. Godzilla as well. Or how about the King Kong remake in 1976? Another effects giant, Rick Baker, actually wore the King Kong suit. Jeff Goldblum in The Fly. The Cenobites in Hellraiser, Pumpkinhead, Stan Winston, the list goes on. Who made your list? Best guy in a suit, creature flick. At Boombox Pod on Twitter. Did you survive the great Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp outage of 2021? Well, if you just heard me, I can hazard a guess. So what did you do to pass the six hours that felt like an eternity? Did you actually have to talk to people or get some work or school done? Sleep through it all, like I did? So what happened? Hackers quickly chimed in, saying that this had nothing to do with the 1.5 billion Facebook accounts' data being scraped and going up for sale on the dark web. Some people that paid money for that data never received it, which is pretty hilarious. How dare you rip me off? I paid for this large-scale privacy invasion, which is perfectly legal and expected anyway in today's society. So Facebook said, quote, Configuration changes on the backbone routers that coordinate network traffic between our data centers caused issues that interrupted this communication. This had a cascading effect, bringing our services to a halt. People suddenly couldn't post selfies for validation or complain about politics and disown more friends and family. Businesses that rely on Facebook and WhatsApp for actual work-related communication were swiftly punched in the baby maker. Wildcard line, you are on the air. Speaking of punches in the baby maker, hello, conspiracy. Conspiracy? Uh, hey, how'd you know? Well, I, I wrote the script. Touche. Touche. <laughs> Bobby Boucher. All right, so uh, what's your take on the Facebook outage? Well, you ought to know by now what I'm going to say, but I'll say it anyway. Aliens. Aliens. Wow, you really did write the script. Aliens do social experiments all the time to watch what we sheep will do. All those challenges on Click Clock. 
Squid Games. Hey, Captain. Yes, Kit. Can I say something to this bozo? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Hop on the mic here. Gracias. Hey, listen up, J. Jonah Jerkison. What? I'm an alien, and I can tell you, it ain't us. Uh-huh. There's plenty of other social media sites to jump on when one or two goes offline, you know. Oh, really? Well, if it's not the alien globalist agenda, what is it, Rick Moranis? I resemble that remark. Uh, no, it's the Illuminati. Do explain. Oh, uh, no explanation. It's just fun to say. Not my zoo, not my monkeys. But monkeys are cool. I gotta go try and get Twitter offline. Whoa, ho- ho- hold on. Stop. Stop. Strike that. Reverse that. Are, are, I totally you, didn't say that out loud. Conspiracy. are you the one that pulled the plug on Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp? Oh my god, the end of the segment is coming right this way! Man, what a week. Okay, so uh, Twitch had this massive data breach. I'm on there myself. Go Han with your own bad self is my channel. Please like and subscribe. My wife likes to say, are you twitching tonight? And I respond by going, and then she gives me judgy face. So the leaked info includes a breakdown of how many millions of dollars, millions of dollars that the company and its top streamers have made, as well as the source code for the entire website platform. Twitch has been a very successful for many, many years, though it is criticized for being a toxic dumpster fire of hate. Perhaps you have also heard about the hate raids permeating the site, invading many live streams, including yours truly there. Oh, hey, southwest of Mount Fuji, you are on the air. Oh, this is Angus. Angus Young? No. Angus Steak? Nope, just plain Alright, well, what can I do for you, Ang, old buddy? Uh, I'm deeply disturbed by these leaks. I'm kind of used to it at this point. There's no such thing as privacy anymore. The government and <coughs> other people are already watching and listening to everybody's every move. But yeah, yeah, I, I changed my password on Snitch. Twitch. Uh, wait, you stream on Twitch? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I show off my Cheeto collection on the stream. Oh, uh, well, the ones I didn't already eat. That sounds amazing. Uh, I get so many chicks. Plus, I enabled Tufa. Excuse me, w- w- what? Tufa. Tufa. Two, two, uh, two FA, two, two-factor authentication. You know what? That That's a good idea. Everybody should enable that on every site that offers it. It's, it's a good security move. Oh. You know, that's where it makes you enter a randomly generated code you have to paste from an authenticator app or a text message that gets directly sent to you. I just thought it was hipster speak for two loofus. I was confused. What does scrubbing your body in the shower have to do with video games? Well, TBH, some gamers could stand to have better hygiene. Uh. Got a special guest here on the show, paranormal investigator E.V. Pete. It's great to be here. Whoa, is that your real voice? Uh, anyway, E.V. Pete, um, what is your paranormal specialty? Oh, I study EVPs. Oh, hence your name. Okay, okay. Uh, oh, uh, what are EVPs? Electronic voice phenomenon. Do, 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 do. <laughs> okay, so Pete, what what's the end goal here? I want to prove to the world that ghosts are real. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard of this. So you guys go into a supposedly haunted place with a mic and a recorder and you try to capture the voices of ghosts that you can't hear in the moment, but they show up in the recordings. E.V. Pete, have you brought any of those recordings with you here today? Yep. Cool. You know, usually EVPs are captured on a crappy cassette player with a lot of static and distortion and it's hard to hear everything and they can be easily faked. Not me. Uh-huh. I use my cousin's mother's uncle's daughter's ex-soccer coach's phone recorder. Oh, so like a smartphone? I don't know if it's intelligent per se. Okay. But it definitely picks up the supernatural spectrum. Uh-huh. This year was recorded in an abandoned trailer park in Cornpole, Mississippi, where one Gilda Gooberville murdered her husband Jacob with a cheese whiz can. Ugh, why? Well, you see, she stole the rarest of his refrigerator magnet collection and pawned it for 62 cents. Okay, let's give it a listen here. I am speaking to the spirit of Jacob Gooberville. If you can hear me, Jacob, speak now into this here doohickey. Uh, Did your wife? 
kill you with the cheese whiz can? <laughs> Did you pawn her ultra rare refrigerator magnet for 62 cents? <laughs> oh. Would you like me to give you my refrigerator magnet collection? No. Okay, bye. Wow. EVP. Indisputable evidence that ghosts are real. Thanks so much for patting the show. Thanks for having me, Carl. What happens when an artist isn't given royalties due for their work? Oh. Well, nowadays, you take to social media in the hopes that awareness will go viral. Author Alan Dean Foster novelized Star Wars and Alien and ended up actually suing Disney, who is the licensor and publisher for both franchises, and settled out of court. But he is just one of a handful of higher-profile creators that were owed money, and they took care of them. What about the others? Now, another high-profile author who isn't owed money himself, but is awesome, Neil Gaiman. We know him from Sandman, Good Omens, Coraline. That's just scratching the surface. He signal boosted by tweeting, standing up for other authors and artists. He linked to a blog that lists companies such as Dark Horse and Boom Comics, Fox, Marvel, Lucasfilm, all for missing royalty payments. A task force, writersmustbepaid.org, has been organized to bring attention, launching the hashtag Disney Must Pay. Important to note that nobody's asking for a boycott. This movement is purely to reinforce fair compensation stipulated in contracts, which isn't being adhered to across the board. You gotta remember, artists are freelancers. You never know where or when the next paycheck is coming. I can relate to that as a voice actor. And royalties or residuals can make the difference in making rent or a mortgage payment. So, let's get these people paid! Comments, questions, suggestions, and your answers for the question of the week at Boombox Pod on Twitter. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step, unless you're really lazy. In which case, what's next on the Netflix queue? Until next time, I'll see you on the flippity floppity.